On the behalf of me and my family, we would like to thank you all for the prayers. On the be on on the behalf of our bereaved, but my brother had passed away. So we so we thank you for the prayers and the concern. Thank you. Hallelujah. We clap our hands one more time. Just thank the Lord for being so kind and so merciful. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. It truly is all about Him. Hallelujah. This week, before we go to our scripture text, I just want to kind of give you a a setup of how this message came about. Take a seat for a second, if you will. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You ever just have one of them weeks that you was kind of hoping would go a little faster and get behind you? Well, I was having one of them weeks. And I think it came in about uh, Wednesday or Tuesday. I said, Lord, I'm ready to hop trains. I said, the train I'm on seems like the, the tracks are greased. There's a lot of activity, but no forward motion. There's all the sounds and all the displays that things are happening, but they're not going anywhere. Anybody ever have that in your life? <laughs> yeah, you're on a, a greased set of tracks. <laughs> and you're, you seem to be on the right train, but you're not. Amen? So I was going down Martin Luther King, and I was actually headed south. I had just went, crossed El Dorado Street, and I said, Lord, I said, I want this to be occupied with something that matters. And he spoke this word, one word to me, just one word, accompaniment. If... I could get the word accompaniment brought up there, please. See, I have a high school degree. I didn't graduate from no college. And I know that you've, if you've heard me any time at all, you understand that English is not my strong suit. Amen? But accompaniment, hallelujah, but accompaniment, it has a definition. In music, it's an instrumental or a vocal part designed to support or complement a melody. The example is he sang the song with a piano accompaniment. It's kind of like when Brother Wilson kind of leads out the beginning of a service with accompaniment. He's throwing in some nice soft melodies. We don't even know how it's affecting our heart, but it's preparing the soil to receive the seed. Amen? So accompaniment was the one word he gave me for today's message. And wouldn't you know it, being how he is faithful and true, Sister Pope, like you spoke of, he gave me a message from one word. So if you would stand with me at this time. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. He is so kind and so good. Hallelujah. Just got to find the page where I got it printed at. Hallelujah. And 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Concerning who? Concerning you. We're going to read it one more time. Okay? In everything. Give thanks, for this is the will of God. You would think where it says this is the will of God, that would be underlined in our minds that says, very important, highlight this, highlight this, come back to this, renew this in your spirit, renew this in your mind, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And uh, if we could just bow our heads, we're going to pray this morning. And we're just praying something special today. That accompaniment would come to pass in each and every one of us. Father, I pray that your accompaniment, what the definition is, would come to pass. Not only in my life, but in their lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 
amen and amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. The uh, message title today is The Instrument of, Th of Giving Thanks. The Instrument of Giving Thanks. See, the keyboard is an instrument, a trumpet is an instrument. There's so many different instruments that when you pick it up, some people can tell right off the bat if you know how to play well or if you've just picked it up for the very first time. Amen? But see, the instrument of giving thanks, I believe, is an instrument that the more you play it and the more you exercise it and the more you stretch it, the better it becomes to sound, not only just coming out of here, but in the, in the heart and in the mind and in your ears, and you begin to understand what thanksgiving is unlocking. Amen? Amen. So that's what the Lord was talking to me about this morning was, is that accompaniment is actually a thanksgiving, a giving thanks unto God for what He is, for what He has revealed in us, what He's doing in us, and what He is manifesting Himself in us to be. Amen? Hallelujah. In 1 Samuel 1 and 9, it says, So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed, it says, unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of God, I tell you what, we'll try this one. If you just want to give me the non-walking one right here, we'll go non-walking, and we'll just stay put. How's that sound? Thank you, Jesus. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give into thine handmaid a man child. See, she wants something from God. She wants to not be barren, but she wants to bring forth fruit. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall no razor come upon his head. Skipping down to verse 17, Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. It says right here, And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. We understand the story of Hannah is that she was moving her lips, but there was nothing coming out. Matter of fact, the man of God even thought she was drunken. Up there in verses 13, Hannah spake in her heart and only her lips moved. And Eli, he thought she was drunken in 14. And, Han and Anna, Hannah answered in 15 and said, I'm not drunk. My heart, my soul, I'm just heavy. I've really got something heavy on me right now. So getting back to, thir to 17, then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was sad no more. She took what the man of God said and believed it. Amen? Hallelujah. She took that which was she heard and she believed it. Oh, hallelujah. And they rose up in verse 19 and they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah and Elkanah. He knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come after Hannah had conceived that she bare his son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord of the yearly sacrifice. Look at your neighbor and say, the yearly sacrifice. Yes. Hallelujah. And his vow. And Hannah went not up, for she was 
She said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned. And then I'll bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. And Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seemeth good, what seemeth thee good. Tarry until thou hast weaned him. Only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. Verse 24, And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks, one ephah of flour, a bottle of wine, and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. Now I want you to think about this. You've just asked the Lord for something you couldn't produce on your own, and he gave it to you. You just carried it for nine months. You got to feel it in your womb for nine months. And you may possibly have had the enemy say to you, you know, you made a vow. God came through on his part, but maybe he wants you to really keep this child. Maybe Samuel should stay with you. So she's got to fight through some of that stuff. But I want you to see the demeanor and where should this woman's at by the time birth came and by the time the child's weaned. You would think it would be enough just to give the child up. Can I, can I just... Give a display here. There's a, a paycheck that we all receive, and there's certain guidelines that some of us have that says, you know what? This is enough, okay? Right here. What I'm giving and what I believe God wants me to give is enough because this is what I earned. But see, Hannah doesn't have this mentality right here. Hannah has a weird mentality that says, God gave me more than just a child. He gave me a thankfulness that I, can't, I have to share with the world. And he gave me a thankfulness that says, you know what? I know what I said I wanted to give, but I have come today to give a whole lot more than just that. I said I was only going to give the child. But she brought sacrifices on top of that which the vow included. She said, you know, it should be enough that I'm giving my own flesh and blood to this man of God. But I have learned so much in thankfulness that I understand this, that he doesn't just give one time in thankfulness. And that his hand is not too short or lack that all of a sudden that's all he's able to give. But he, that which is faithful, say the word faithful. That which is faithful, he is so much able to do exceedingly above all that which Hannah had even asked. She said, I'm not just offering up my son. I've come with this sacrifice. I've brought a bullock's. I brought some ephah of flour. I brought some wine. I'm bringing some other things with me, God, to show you how thankful that I am. Because where your real thankfulness shines is, is not just given what's required, but it's going that beyond the required state. Does anybody hear me today? Okay. He healed me this morning when I began to read what Hannah was going through and, and when she showed up and when I read that part there, he began to deal with my own heart. And he says, you know that person that you consider being even with or all debts paid with, okay? He said, I want you to bring a little bit more something to the table. I want you to express what thankfulness, thankfulness looks like on two legs. I know that you have a receipt in your hand for $156 that you have already paid the bill, okay? That's right at home in my file. And he says, and I know the rest that you have already paid for. 
But he said, there's a healing going on here, Brother Thornton. There is a, I want you to stand in the midst of the storm and get to behold something brand new. And yeah, you're looking at it like it's, you know, $700. But I'm looking at it a whole lot different. I'm looking at it like you are releasing this thankfulness into this situation. And when you release this thankfulness into this situation, it's not only going to just heal you, it's going to heal the others that are involved. If you have never had somebody owe you in your life, you probably ain't got a clue as to what I'm talking about. If you have never blessed over and above and then had the same somebody come back to you and say, you owe me, then you don't know what I'm talking about. But imagine that, comp that, that story in the Bible where the Lord forgave the person of their debt and then he turns around and finds somebody that owes him a little bit of nothing. Say a little bit of nothing. Say, say what I owe is a little bit of nothing. And this man found this other guy and he wants to, he wants to put up his whole family up for in prison until the debt's paid. He wants justice served. Anybody in here ever want justice served? Anybody in here says, you know what? I know I'm right. I know I've done my part. It's all on them. And then God says, well, why don't we take that them and just take it like an eraser on a chalkboard. But I don't want you to lightly go over it to where you still can see the faint outline. I want you to wash the chalkboard after you get done using that eraser. See, some of you are too old, excuse me, too young in here that you don't even know what a chalkboard even looks like. I had the job of going down there and vacuuming out all the erasers when I was young. Because see, it got you out of class. I was that kid that wanted to get out of class for anything. Not even understanding that I was working to get out of class, but didn't care. I, hey, the rest of them are in there. I'm vacuuming out erasers. But see, not knowing this, God would give me a message later on in life that there's too many people that got erasers instead of allowing him to wash the board clean. Because see, that eraser still allows you to view it at a certain angle when the time gets right. That eraser, it only takes off the surface. But boy, when you wash that board, every pore of that board, and you'll say, the chalkboard's got pores to them? Yes, they do. And see, the pores of our heart, the pores of our heart can't get clean with just an eraser. The pores of your heart has to be thoroughly washed with a blood that only he can wash with. And you'll say to yourself, Brother Thornton, I thought you was talking about thankfulness today. I am. Because see, what thankfulness does is it unlocks all this and unlocks this mouth to where what used to be cursings comes out, there's blessings that comes out. Instead of you looking at that person saying, they owe me, you look at that person and say, God save them. Deliver them. Let there be something that breaks the bond, breaks the yoke, dear God, today. Whatever it takes, save their soul. Because if they pay you the debt, their soul ain't no better. But if they get clean in their heart, you'll say, Brother Thorne, you got all that from Hannah today. I got all that from Hannah today. Because she brought more than it was required. She brought something that only God could bring forth. And then she brought something that she could bring forth. And she said, God, 
what you put inside of me and what you allowed to be born, I'm giving back to you. But the stuff that I've got in my own cupboards and the stuff that I got in my own possession, I want to let you know that everything, everything I have is yours. I don't have no limits that says, Jesus, you can only go this far. I am only going to give you that which is required. And let me tell you which, what that which required gets you. It gets you a partially clean heart with a lot left undone. And you'll say to yourself, what is the undone part? The undone part is that giving beyond yourself. You're giving out of his will instead of your own. Hallelujah. Let's continue reading. Verse 27, for this child I prayed and the Lord hath given me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth. He shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. Now she can make a real selfish move and not give that which was supposed to be given. But Samuel's the one that's going to pay the ultimate price. Because he's Samuel, when he gets put in the position of being given to the ministry and given to God, that's the place where God is just talking to him. That's where God is just saying, you know what? Your mama was smart enough to place you where you're supposed to be. Anybody in here know that God has called you to place something where it's supposed to be? And you... And you know, and you've, you've held it tight because you know it's a part of you. And, you, and you've, you've said, God, I've given that which was required. How much more do you want from me? How real does this have to be? And he says, I want it all. I want it all. I don't want to leave you un unwashed. I want everything about you to be washed. I don't want you to see in part. I want you to see all the mysteries revealed. Folks, there is a finish line and the finish line involves the word all it doesn't involve the word some it doesn't involve the word part it involves all of you given to all of him and you'll say to yourself well that's a big price to pay brother Thornton I don't think it's even close to the price that he gave for you and I because the price he gave for you and I is yet still being paid. There's people being yet born that are covered under that same price tag. You'll say to yourself, well, shouldn't the, the bill be paid? Not as long as there's still people being born. And not as long as there's still a baby that yet cries. And not as long as there's a soul that yet liveth that says, I desire a cleansing that only God can bring. Anybody in here knows that they couldn't cleanse themselves the way Jesus cleansed them? Jesus knows how to cleanse. What he's messed with me about is there's been things that I have deemed as mine that I don't want to give. I've already told him I've given in the offerings, I've given in the tithes, I have smiled, I've grinned, and I've bared it. I've done all those things up to this point, but just a few. And he says, but it's those few things that let, doesn't allow you to see the miracle that's right in front of you. See, there's times that we have to rename some things. Let me tell you what he's talking about. The time to rename some things is... 
thankfulness will rename what you're in because all you can view it as is the hardest time of your life. But when the thankfulness steps in and it says, I can see you're in the birthing pains. I can see something needs to be brought forth. If you would just rest and let that bring forth and see the miracle and let's name it together. We're going to name it the great deliverance. We're going to name this that you're going through the hardest time of your life as a great deliverance. And you'll say to yourself, what are you even talking about today, Brother Thornton? What I'm trying to say is, is there's times in your life when the storm just seems to linger. St. Louis just had about 12 inches, 9 to 12 inches of rain. I went down there for my medical exam, I believe it was Thursday, and I went down there and I'm seeing cars that you only see a foot, a foot out of the water, cars that are on the roads, okay? It ain't designed to be a submarine. That means there's a whole lot more than the engineers had planned for when they developed the area. What God can bring your direction is a whole lot more than what you planned for. What you had uh, set aside for. All because you've allowed him to take that which is the closest to you. Remember when that lawyer shows up and he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He says, well, you know, you got this, this, and this. and I've kept all those from my youth up. And then he says the one thing. <laughs> Sorry about that. All the faucets are open. He says one thing. Go sell everything you've got. Give it away and follow me. And he knows the attachment that that stuff has. And he knows all the pores in that heart that's being plugged by that attachment. Close your eyes with me right now and place your hand over your own heart and pray this with me. God, every pore in my heart, I want you to cleanse. And I want you to cleanse it today in Jesus' name. Amen. He knows what was hindering that guy. But the guy didn't look at it like it was hindering him. He looked like the cost is too much to give up. He didn't understand what it's keeping him from. He said, if you give this up and come and follow me, you're going to hear some things you ain't never heard. You're going to see some things you've never seen. You may taste some things you've never tasted of before. I would much rather travel the world of Jesus and taste of all his culinary goods. You want to talk about a good chef. He knows what seasoning to put on everything. And you know, we've all been there before when you go to that hospital food and it's as bland as bland gets and you think in your mind, well, this needs some of this and this needs some of that. <laughs> I'm telling you today, there is a soul in you crying out saying, I want the master to prepare the recipe. You've done a really poor job, Brother Thornton, on trying to prepare the recipe. You've got to put in all the ingredients. Not some of the ingredients, all the ingredients. I don't care if you think it's fair or unfair. I don't care if, if they completely spit on you as you give it. Let this be clean. Let this be pure. You'll say to yourself, is it really worth all that? I assure you as I'm standing here today, living and breathing. And you'll say to yourself, well, Brother Thornton, he's already given you that number that you're supposed to give. Trust me, as I'm standing here today, I don't want anything between me and Jesus Christ. And you'll say to yourself, well, Brother Thornton, I'm glad he's just talking to you about that, not me. 
Have you ever heard that place where it says that he's no respecter of persons? I can assure you of this. When you yield to one thing, there'll be something right around the corner to yield to the next day and then the next day because he's taken off all the rough corners that pride has built up on your life. You're saying, you got all that out of Hannah today? I got all that out of Hannah today. Right when I got to the place where she, she brought more than what was required. It opened up the floodgates. And you know those people in St. Louis that said, you know, Lord, I think we've got enough rain here. And I guarantee there's some Christians down there that was saying that. The woman that put the IV in me on Thursday said, our house is right here. And she said, the very next house, they lost everything in their basement. Everything. And some of us have experienced that everything. And she's one house away and didn't get touched. And I thought to myself, you know, <laughs> when you picked that house, you picked the right one, didn't you? And she's, she's just feeling so bad. Even though she hasn't lost anything, she sees the loss in others. And I think this is where the Lord's bringing us to is, when are you, when are you gonna really view the loss in others? When are you gonna see it as more than a me and a me, myself, and I gospel and says, you know what? Thankfulness can unlock all that. When you become thankful, Remember when I spoke about the communion, how me and the Lord's gonna have communion a lot more often? This morning, my mind was racing in the wrong direction. And he remembered, he remembered our little deal together, our little covenant together. And he reminded me of what's in the refrigerator and what's up in the cabinet. And he says, you know, I know you're struggling right now with carnal things and carnal ways and he said but why don't we just take a moment and reestablish that which is important in your life I didn't even get to Hannah before I had communion today do you realize maybe if I wouldn't have had communion Hannah wouldn't have spoke so loudly today I think that there's a time when you just got to really get real with Jesus and say you know what I've been kind of doing my own thing a little too long. And my mind is kind of filled with, it is absorbed with all the things that are me. Can we just find a place together to where we can reset some buttons in me, Lord? I poured out that little grape juice in my little red Solo cup. I got that old cracker. And you know what? Can I just explain something about the cracker? See, I could have got a fresh ream of crackers. But instead, Brother Thornton doesn't always put things in Ziploc baggies. And I got this old package of crackers up there that the flavor is not there. It's one of those that just a little bit before the mealworm should kind of get it, one of those. It ain't got no bugs crawling in it yet, but it sure ain't a good cracker. And those are my communion crackers. <laughs> and you'll say, why'd you choose those? Because I want, it to be the, I want it to be the farthest thing from enjoyable to this tongue. I want it to really mean something to me. And you'll say, well, that's ridiculous. I know, I'm that ridiculous guy. I'm that guy that just thinks that a little bit of grape juice and a cracker, and all of a sudden my day can be changed. And I'm telling you, there is a whole lot too when you just allow him to just get off the round corners and the round edges and let pride just get knocked off. Hallelujah. Let's finish up with Hannah here. Oh, hallelujah. And Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted. She shifted gears from 1 Samuel 1 and 28 to 2 Samuel, excuse me, 1 Samuel 2 and 1, she has shifted some gears. She now went from a place of giving to a place of rejoicing that which was given. And you'll say, there's really a place like that? Let's, let's hear where she shifted to. 
and then I'm going to let you know that that's a place you can shift to when your giving's right, okay? It says right here, Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bowels of the mighty men are broken. They that stumble are girded with strength, and they that are full have hired out themselves for bread. And they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven. And she that hath many child is waxed feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth the low and lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust. He lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them and he will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail and the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces and out of the heaven shall be thunder upon them and the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Can we clap our hands real fast? So you're telling me by her giving beyond what's required, she all of a sudden got a revelation of who she's thankful for, why she's thankful for this guy, and what he's really done in her life, things that are unseen. I want to move from the things that are seen to the unseen. Show me, God, the unseen today. Release the unseen in our hearts today, God. Knowing this, that that which is seen is temporal. But God, you've got an eternal life that you placed inside my eternal heart, dear God, that you could just teach me some eternal, eternal education. I want your eternal education, the eternal lessons, dear God. Let them, dear Lord, teach me today thy eternal ways in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to shift gears. I, I want God to take that which is given, and I want him to multiply it. I want him to take that which is broken, because see, he, he thanked the Lord. This is so weird for me to view. Jesus, who is the Lord, thanked his Father for that which was given, even though it wasn't enough. In the carnal mind, it's not enough. We got 5,000 folks. You did not get a big enough offering. You did not gather enough. And he took that which was not enough. And the very first thing he did was, thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for that which has been given. Because, see, he views the unseen. He views what you and I have a hard time to grasp. And you'll say to yourself, you know, I had that time on the couch during that COVID spat to where all, all, everything's breaking loose in my life. I'm sick. I've got financial situations. I've got people situations. And I finally just, I just said, but, woo! I said, hey, I said, me and you's got to talk. I said, me and you have got to get real with each other. Hey, ring, the natural phone rang. It's the COVID people. They said, when did you first start getting symptoms and signs? And I told them it was this, this day. Well, you shouldn't even be off work right now. We're going to email you a release to go back to work. Financial problem taken care of. But then the other parts need to be taken care of with the pores of my heart. The other parts are the ones that says, I know that this is what I've required of you, but you have not heard the voice of thankfulness that says, 
everything I give. Everything you deserve, God. Hannah gets shifted into that place to where everything is given. She understands that, you know what? I don't understand everything about this God, but he has shown himself to me. I see with my own faithful eyes now that this God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ever ask and think. And you'll say, Brother Thornton, you know, she didn't quote the I know it, but she got a chance to live it. I don't care if I'm not the guy that originally quoted something, let me just live it. Let me just live something that somebody else got a chance to quote. Woo! He said, come unto me. Oh, would you, would you come unto me? Is that a real hard thing to do? Is it hard to just really come unto him? But when we got those walls and those borders that says, you know what? I've already given God. I have already given that which was required. And I know if I stand my ground long enough, you'll understand that it was enough. But I'm letting you know today, he can outlast you. He, he can outsmart you. They came to him with the lawyers and said, you know what? You know, was, uh, was this of God or was this not of God? And he answers them with a question. <laughs> because his wisdom, it goes beyond what you and I can see. He answers them with a question. And you know what? Them lawyers said, we, we, don't, we don't know. And he says, well, I ain't going to tell you then. If you ain't going to answer my question, I'm not going to answer your question. But I have one that knows all the answers. He knows what goes on in your heartstrings. He knows if it's playing a good melody or if it's something that's just so out of tune and out of whack that nobody could sing to it. And nobody could just hum to it and say, you know what? I want that for my life. I want that song in me. Could you teach me that song? Could you teach me the song that says everything is yours, Jesus? Could you teach me the song that says not everything, hallelujah, is mine, but I give it all. I give it all to you, God. I give it all to you, Lord. And maybe I'm not talking to somebody in here today. Maybe it's just me in here today. But I can tell you this. Hannah blessed me today because she brought more than what was required. And you'll say, Brother Thorne, don't you need that 700 and some odd dollars? You bet I do. And don't you know that the receipt you got in your hand at home, right there at home, says that you paid the $156? Yes, I see it. But I'm seeing something that thankfulness is talking to me about. Thankfulness is talking to me about, I've got this all under control. Trust me. I want to usher you to a place of trust that your very next step you don't even have to think about. I want trust to be so much in you that they're, they're going to want to name you faithful. They're going to want to rename you one that trusts God for everything. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. So yes, do I think the price is a little heavy on the one side? At first I did. At first I looked at it and said, how many times do you have to pay for something before it becomes yours? And this is what he spoke to me. He says, why don't you call it mine? Instead of you calling it yours, why don't you call it mine and you just be my go-between to where I'm flowing money through your hands and you're giving it to this person like it doesn't belong to you and you'll say well that's an easy thing to do if I had hundred dollars bills right now and gave everybody in here a hundred dollar bill and said all you got to do is give this away would there be a slight problem in somebody today it was freely received right you cost you nothing you held out your hand brother Thornton put a hundo right in your hand a Benjamin in your hand 
Only thing you've got to do is find somebody to give it to. Would it cause a stumble in your walk today? I'm not saying every time that money's put in my pocket that it doesn't cause a stumble. But what I'm trying to tell you is today, there are some things that just seems to hold us back. And I know it all ties in with thankfulness. And see, complaining is the one thing that just wants to step on every thankfulness that you got in you. It just wants to wipe out everything that you're thankful for. And you got to take them shoes off. Matter of fact, change them shoes. If you got two sets of shoes at home, you change them shoes. You label those one shoes complaining and the other one's praise. And every time you look at the shoes that you're not supposed to wear, I want you to think about it. I want you to think about, man, every time I wear them shoes, I'm out of position. I don't have my balance right according to that word we spoke about earlier today. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is so good. Paul in Acts, Acts 27 and 22, says, Now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall, no, there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God. And folks, I can't imagine what it's like some angel standing beside you talking to you that you know and you know that you know that you know this ain't a common occurrence this is something that thankfulness opened the door to this is a something that says everything that i've got is yours god has opened the door for an angel stood by this guy and began to speak to him direction begin to speak to him words of encouragement Stood by me this night, the angel of God, who, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Now this is real important. Sister Pope mentioned about praying for the families of those people there in Assumption, that they lost their sons. One of the gentlemen that I work with he knew all them boys. He lives in Assumption, small town. And you're thinking to yourself, man, there's, there's waves, there's ripple waves of compassion, of hurt, of sorrow, that when they hurt, you hurt, because it's such a tight community, okay? And when I found out this stuff, the first, first thing I wanted to do, I says, I says, his name's Kevin. I said, Kevin, I said, I want you to find out. I said, when, when this family, when they have any kind of donation, any kind of anything, please let me know. Don't leave me out of this. I said, because I hurt for this family. I really hurt for the families involved. What causes us to even have compassion like that? It sure ain't the enemy of your soul. There is, there is that compassion in you that says, you know what? They're hurting, so I'm hurting. Okay? I want to be able to be in that position to where when Sister Creeth needs prayer, I know it before she tells me it, okay? You know, Sister Jamie, if she's got anything, anything that's bothering her, I know about it before anybody's ever told me about it. You know, Brother Martin, I want that given all so it opens up these. Because see, these pores in this heart, they get all messed up. Half of them clogged up. I don't know if you've ever used a shop vac before that's plugged up. A vacuum cleaner that's plugged up don't do the job it's supposed to do. Time to change the bag, folks. <laughs> it's, it's time to let him cleanse the heart with a new bag. <laughs> Open up. Hey, anyway, let's get back to Paul here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe, God, that it shall be even as it was told me. How be it? We must be cast upon a certain island. And I know where I was going with this. There are people that are blessed 
because you can hear. All the people in this ship didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ that, that Paul did, right? But see, because Paul was in their company, they got some of the overflow. Say that word with me, overflow. Overflow. They got their lives spared because Paul's on the ship. Sometimes in your life, people that don't even deserve, they have not opened up the well that says, I'm going to give it all. But the reason they're blessed is, is because there's that somebody that said, you know what? Everything I've got, I give to you, Jesus. I don't have anything in the reservoir that says, that's mine. I gave you enough, that's mine. My reservoir is empty of me. That's what, that should be my testimony. And after today, that is gonna be my prayer. I believe the communion that I talked about earlier was ushering me to this day. You'll say to yourself, how can a communion usher you to that day? Because there's certain things I can't handle all at once. You can't give birth to a child in one day, can you? Get pregnant and give birth that same day? You ask any woman in here, she wants to have the nine months put into one day. Any takers? Now I have talked to some pregnant women that said they'd almost give their, their pinky just to have that child born because they're in that ninth month, okay? But there's the process. And that communion that I talked about was taking me to this process called the last day of July. To where he's showing me, you cleaned some erasers, Brother Thornton, <laughs> and you wiped off a few blackboards. But I want to show you what a clean heart really looks like. You'll say, Brother Thornton, you've already talked about a clean heart before, and you've already talked. Everything is a process. I'm so glad he doesn't throw it all on me because it would have killed me. I thought I was experiencing pain. I'm telling you straight up right now. I've had, I've had parts of me burned that ain't supposed to be burned. I've had two torn rotor cuffs. I've had two hernia surgeries. I've had one torn knee, caustic in this eye. I ain't never had the amount of pain that comes with trying to hold back some stuff. I wanted to blame him because he wasn't receiving what I gave with the fullness and the goodness that he should have. But the pain wasn't being caused by him. The pain was being caused by what I'm holding back. And you'll say, Brother Thorne, <laughs> are you sure about that? The goodness of God draws men and women to salvation. And then it's that process of getting to know him and it's a getting to love him. And there's a little less of you each and every day. But the part that he really, 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 really wants to deal with is the part that's yet given. That part that yet given is causing you to stumble, causing you all kinds of aches and pains, and you still want to blame the blessing giver instead of the one. Because we, like we like to blame everybody but ourselves, right? What I'm telling you today is, and maybe I'm just sharing me in the hopes that maybe there's somebody out there that might have gone through the same thing or are going through the same thing. But I assure you as I stand here, in these nice, comfortable shoes of mine, I've had some hindrances, and they wasn't because of Jesus. I've had, some, I've had some bad days and some sad days, but it wasn't because of Jesus. I wanted to blame him for a lot of things, but you, hey, not guilty is written all over him. Not guilty is written all over the one that's in your heart. And we try to give him a name that ain't even his name. We try to relabel the Lord that has set us free and tell him you're unfair. I'm sorry you had to hear my testimony today. 
I'm probably just the only guy in here. But I can assure you this, I'm going to keep taking that communion and I'm going to keep giving everything he tells me to give. And you'll say to yourself, shouldn't it be easy just to give it all? There's some stuff that's really rooted, folks. I'm glad he knows how to unroot some things. Remember when they wanted to take the, the tares and take them out of the good field? He said, nah, let them grow together for a while. <laughs> that way you're not tearing up the good harvest. I want the good master of the harvest to come and weed my field. Every time that these hands try to weed my own field, I mess up. I take too much good and not enough bad. <laughs> and then I come back to him saying, look at the sacrifice involved here. You know, I got the good and the bad, they're mixed up. And he didn't even tell me to root up anything because that human effort says, I got this. I can take care of this. Let the good master of the harvest weed your garden. Only thing you need to do is, with that Hannah attitude that says, I'm thankful for what you've done to God. I'm thankful that you're cleaning everything, every wit about me. Amen? Let me get Paul done here and then I'm going to come to a close. I've been everywhere but where I'm supposed to be, but I think I've been on track, if that makes sense. Hallelujah. It says, Sir, be of good cheers, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told to me. Howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the 14th night would come, 14 nights, 14 nights, you got a little splinter in your finger and you're wondering to yourself, when can I get this thing out? And by the 14th night, they're having their world turned upside down. Not everything you're going through is as big as you've made it out to be. I'm talking to Brother Thornton this time. Here, I'll turn to myself here. Not everything that you're going through is as big as you've made it out to be. Is that better? That way I didn't tell it to you. I spoke to myself. Okay? The 14th night was come, and as we were driven up and down Adria, in Adria, about midnight the shipmen de deemed that they drew near to some country, and they sounded and they found it was 20 fathoms, and when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it was 15 fathoms, and then fearing least they should fall upon the rocks. They didn't want to tear up the ship, okay? It's a good idea. They cast four anchors out of the stern and they wished for day, and as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under color, as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said, look at 27 and 31, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship. You can't be saved. You got all the different ways that you want to go about this terrible situation, and there's one man that's giving you sincere, godly direction. And you want to listen to everything out there that's screaming the contrary. You know how many voices are screaming the contrary to us? You, you don't need to go to that church. Matter of fact, I was told today, okay, I won't mention the person. Well, you, you got church tomorrow, okay? No, I don't got church tomorrow. I get to go worship tomorrow with others. It ain't a something to where all of a sudden it's, it's a hindrance to me. It's a healing to me. I get to hear others with their testimonies. Sister Pope blessed me so much when she's talking about thankfulness up here, talking about all the things that she has to endure, and, and thankfulness never left her tongue. It stayed in her heart. It stayed in her mind. <laughs> Friend, the enemy wants you to sell out cheap. Nope. You got to have a not for sale sign on you today. Hallelujah. But except these abide in the ship, you can't be saved. Skipping down to verse 35. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. 
And when he had broken it, you'll say to yourself, now we just have 14 days of hell, brother. 14 days of not knowing this ship is being tossed to and fro. We got no control over this ship. And you, you got the gall to give thanks? Well, see, Paul stands in a whole different arena. He's in the realm of thankfulness. So when everybody else is in the realm of complaining and God, you owe me, he's in the realm of I give myself away. Whew. I give myself away. I think that was his anthem. Hey, his anthem was, I ain't got nothing left in the till. You ain't got nothing to point at and say, you didn't give it all, Paul. So when this man spoke, they listened. He took some bread and he gave thanks before all of them. He could have did one of those little, thank you, God, for this bread. Thank you. I, something in me just says he let them all hear that. There's some people in here today that you need to hear the thankfulness of God. You need to be loose of all the complaining, all the murmuring, all the backbiting. See where the finger's at? Not one of those fingers went out there to you, did it? Right here. Guilty as charged. But you know what I got? I got a vision today. I got released today. And in case you've never seen anybody get released from prison, I have never been behind bars. As far as being a captive, I have visited people that were behind bars. Never was the captive. But there is something that just takes place in a, even an animal. You see a dog that's been in its cage all its life, and all of a sudden now it can run free. What it was meant to do. Pride cages us up so much. Pride just wants to be your best friend and wants to kill you in the same breath. So he broke the bread and he began to eat. Then they all, then were they all of good cheer. From this man's thankfulness prayer, they're going from, I want to flee the situation to everything's going to be okay. What changed? What changed in the circumstances there that they're wanting to flee first and choose their own direction because they've got it figured out and now they're of good cheer because one man gave a prayer that meant everything. He was thankful to God for all that God had done. Amen? We are going to close. I didn't even get to none of that. But we're going to close with this. Jesus himself gave thanks. In John 6 and 11 and 12, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments. Because see, thankfulness opened this door. And everything that thankfulness brought in, I don't want none of it to be left behind. This was birthed through thankfulness. And God, through thankfulness, let go of the miraculous. Every one of these miraculous Thanksgiving little things right here, pick them up. They're not just fishes and loaves. Pick them up. Gather them all up. Luke 22 and 19, and he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and gave unto them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And likewise also the cup after supper saying, this is the cup of the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you. But he gave thanks. And the last one, 24 and 29, but they constrained him saying, abide with us. Stay with us, Jesus. For it is towards the evening and the day is far spent. 
and he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass that as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and he blessed it. He gave thanks for it. He broke it and he gave it to them. And look what verse 31 says. And their eyes were opened and they knew him. Adam knew Eve and she bare a son. So that K-N-E-W right there is a very, very intimate word. Their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. I believe the power of thanking him, the power of giving everything to him, it's sold real, real small in the marketplace. But I'm going to let you know this, it's very valuable. It's the one thing everybody passes up. But when the one person says, you know, I see value in this. And all of a sudden they get the gem that nobody else could find. They get the diamond that nobody else could see. They get the value in something that nobody else could cash in on. Stand with me, please. If I told you today that there's a very valuable thing that God has given you, and this valuable thing is all about completeness, unto perfection, His perfection, not ours, and His completion, not ours. And what if I told you that completeness was a thankfulness that could unlock every situation in your life? You'll say, Brother Thorne, aren't there going to be times in my life when I'm not going to be thankful for something? Yes. Yes, there will be times for that to where you'll say to yourself, I'm having a hard time being thankful for this loss in my life. But somewhere in that loss, there is a God of thankfulness that says, abide in me. I'll show you the thankfulness in this situation. I'll show you what you can't see because of all your hurt and all your pain and all your trials. And I allow you to smile once more. I'll allow you to see what can't be seen to the rich young ruler. This one thing thou lackest. Give it all. Don't give some. Give it all. Give everything that hinders the pores of your heart. And if you're hindered by the giving, I, what I would probably do is, is say, God, give me the direction. Lead me the right path to where I can get there. For Brother Thornton, he, he's looking towards communion and saying that's, that's getting him closer to you. And, and it, it is actually getting his brains in the right direction. Whatever it takes for you to be alone with him and to hear his voice, that's what I recommend for you. But I wouldn't let another day go by. And don't be hindered by the things that you already know is in the closet. Because with or without him, that stuff right there is not going to save you or help you. But with him, he can rid you of all the sickness and all the disease. All the things that affects our soul and our spirit that they don't make a pill for and they don't make a doctor to. There's only one great physician and that one great physician is asking you today, would you be made whole? Would you be made whole? Would you that, I, that are in here today want to be made whole? There's one place where there was some lepers and he cleansed them all and then one comes back and he, he gave thanks. And to that one that gave thanks, they wasn't just cleansed, they was made whole. No scars to look back on and saying, this is what I used to have and this is what I used to be. I want the no scars. I want you to have the no scars. I want you to be in that place that says, you can look at me, but I'm not wounded. <laughs> you can't see any past hurts here. 
I've been, I've been renamed thankful by the thankful and the faithful one. Father, I thank you for this message and I thank you for your people. I thank you, dear Lord, for the love that you not only have shed abroad for me, but each and every person under the sound of my voice. And to many that are called, that are afar off, that have yet to walk through these doors. Enlarge and increase our thankfulness that our faith may grow. That we can see you, not with our natural eyes, but we can trust you with the thankfulness that you gave us. That you know is so hard to give at times. But it's the right thing to do. Thank you for the right thing to do. Thank you for the right thing to do. Forgive us as we forgive our debtors today, as we forgive all those that have trespassed against us, that we can truly have a soul that is set free, a mind that has been set free by your Spirit. Father, we love and we thank you. In Jesus' precious name, if you need to pray today, I highly recommend it. And if you don't need to pray, I wouldn't leave these doors without saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I may have a lot of stuff that I'm still needing to get rid of, Lord, but I love you, Jesus. And I'm trusting you to cleanse the house. Cleanse the house today. Only like you can clean, dear God. Let it be all gone as quickly as you deem reasonable if today is the day of all of it being gone remove it all if today is just the beginning of days thank you for the days thank you for the purpose you've given me father i thank you in jesus name god richly bless you amen amen